Hey fellow explorers, in this video I'm going to be answering all of your frequently asked questions. Questions that I hear over and over and over again and I've got about 40 of them queued up to answer and I'm certainly going to be taking them on the live stream too. If you're watching the live stream, I have a great giveaway from Planin, $250 off an upcoming hotel stay and also a second chance for people that are watching the archive, but we'll talk more about that later. Let's go ahead and first dive into some of these questions. And so what better way to find out the questions that people really want to know other than Googling yourself and looking at the autocomplete. So when I go to Google and I type in Yellow Productions, the things that Google says people really want to know are uh, Yellow Productions. Here, we're going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Are Yellow Productions wife, Yellow Productions wife nationality, Yellow Productions Chris Rainey wife and Yellow Productions Wife Nationality Wikipedia. All right, so many of you want to know about the wife of Yellow Productions, who goes by OC Girl, also known as Orange County Girl, and it turns out she is not a fictional character. She actually exists in real life, and if you want to find her, there is her Instagram handle right there. We took this picture at the Grove in Los Angeles. OC Girl, it's nationality. Uh, she was born in... Taiwan in Taipei. You might have heard there was an earthquake there recently. Everybody in our family is okay, so thank you for asking, though there were definitely a lot of towers wobbling. She grew up in uh, Hawaii on the island of Oahu, went to college here in California at the University of California, Irvine, and then the two of us met right after graduation when we first started working, and it's been love ever since. So there you go. That is everything you've ever wanted to know about OC Girl. Um, Yellow Productions Las Vegas is the next autocomplete. What about Las Vegas, Chris? People always ask or assume I live in Las Vegas. I don't live in Las Vegas. Uh, I live in Orange County in Irvine, California, and uh, but I've been going to Vegas ever since I was a youngin, ever since I was a little, a little baby, I should say. Uh, my parents would take me to Vegas pretty often growing up, and uh, then this is one where OC Girl and I went together. This was our first trip to Vegas, and so whenever I talk about the mistake of getting the giant margarita, you can know that actually comes from somewhere. Uh, this is at the Caesars Palace in one of the fountains. Uh, on the live stream, uh, says, I thought you lived in Vegas as well. Yes, probably because I put out so many Vegas videos. Why does Chris put out so many Vegas videos? Because you all love the Vegas videos, and I love going to Vegas. Orange County is just a short four-hour drive to Vegas, and so we tend to be in Vegas once or twice a year. Yes, I do a lot of filming when I go, and that's how I can put out Vegas content all throughout the year. If I strictly followed what people watched and therefore then made videos on it, this would become the Yellow Productions Las Vegas channel because almost anything I publish about Las Vegas gets more views than almost anything else, but this channel is really a labor of love rather than a labor of what uh, simply gets the most views. Now, I want to tell you a little bit more about the giveaway that I've got going on on the live stream today. Uh, the cool people at planin.com were super generous to offer a $250 rebate on your next hotel stay booked via planin.com. That's what we're giving away today. In order to be eligible to win, you do have to be signed up for planin.com before I get to the giveaway at the end of the live stream. If you haven't signed up for it yet, it is free. You can sign up for it. I have a pinned comment in the chat, but if you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to go ahead uh, and drop it in the chat right now. And what Planet is, it is a new hotel booking website that specializes in creator recommendations. What's one of the big problems with review sites uh, and booking sites? You don't know who makes these recommendations. They write a review. Is it a real person? Is it a bot? And so everybody who reviews and recommends things on Planin is a creator that was vetted by the Planin team. And so you could imagine that uh, Chris here at Yellow Productions is definitely one of the creators recommending hotels on Planin.com. But then you can see right here, like if you search for a city, like maybe Las Vegas, uh, the wind comes up and then it says like four creators recommend that hotel. One of them is also uh, JJ. Uh, he's got uh, a San Diego channel. You might know Jay and you can see some of those over on the left. The other reason you want to take a look at planning.com if you haven't already 
They offer some really good hotel deals. When I was in Vegas for New Year's, I was able to book the win for 40% off uh, the price that they were advertising on their website, on the Win website, just by going to planning.com. They're able to offer these really good rates because it's like a members only site. And so they've got special deals with the hotels to be able to just offer these deals to people that have signed up. And actually, when I looked at these dates in May, if you book via Planning, you could get the Win Hotel for 45% off. So that's a pretty good deal. So sign up so you can enter the contest and uh, so that you can also uh, get some get some good discounts on Vegas hotels. I found that on a lot of different Vegas hotels, but that's enough about planning for right now. <laughs> so in case I didn't say it already, just so I don't forget, sign up so you're eligible for the contest when we get to the end, that $250 hotel stay rebate. Okay, the next search term that you see is Yellow Productions Japan. Uh, and what about Japan? Uh, so, why do I love Japan so much? Why do I go to Japan so much? Have I lived in Japan? Have we lived in Japan? These are all some of the questions that relate to Yellow Productions Japan. This is my first trip to Japan in 2005. Osigo and I went to there. Uh, this is the Sensoji Temple in um, Tokyo. And uh, you can see this is a very young Chris right here. Before Chris was wearing the yellow shirts all of the time. But ever since that first trip, I just fell in love with it. It was not OC Girl's first trip. She did foreign exchange school while she, while she was in college uh, at Tohoku, U Tohoku University in Sendai. She loved it so much that we seem to go back almost every year or every other year. Definitely uh, my favorite place to travel to is Japan. I love the infrastructure, I love the people, I love the food, so easy to travel there. You don't have to worry about crime, getting stuff stolen. Uh, it's just a really great place to go and there's a lot of great things to see. Um, and uh, so in the chat, oh, Smiler, oh, Snap, Miler Time, Miller Time, oh, Snap, Miller Time says, what is Yellow Productions go to credit card? Well, in my very thick wallet right, if my very thick wallet right here, uh, I have a number of credit cards that are in here. The one I spend a lot on is the World of Hyatt business card because this earns uh, like elite nights at Hyatt's and so to get a uh, globalist or things like that. I put some spend on this to go beyond the nights that I actually stay at Hyatt, so that helps. Uh, and my second go-to card is the Chase Sapphire Reserve. This one earns three ultimate rewards points per dollar. You can transfer it to a whole bunch of different currencies. Uh, I also like the Amex Gold card for four membership rewards points at restaurants and also four or five at supermarkets. And then finally, uh, the Amex Platinum card so that I can apparently stand in very long lines for the Centurion lounges. A lot of great benefits on this card, um, but I do like to get in the Centurion lounges, but I found them harder and harder to get in. So those are the uh, four cards that are in my wallet right now. Thank you for that question. Okay, uh, so related to going to Japan, we've been taking uh, the Curious Princess there. Uh, well, I should take it, taking her there. <laughs> we, uh, we took her there and uh, she really had a great time in Japan. People often ask, Chris, is Japan kid friendly? Another question related to Japan. And Tokyo isn't amazingly kid friendly as almost any big city would perhaps not be. Uh, but the countryside absolutely is. If you haven't seen our kind of like a road trip through Atami, the Izu Peninsula. You can see like the amazing kids hotels that had like ball pits in them. Uh, and really like, I think Japan out of the big cities is probably one of the kids friendliest places you could go to. All right. So uh, people ask this question, Yellow Productions age. And as I was, um, as I was looking for a picture to show this, how do I show a picture with my age? I searched in my Google Photos for 43 because I am 43 years old and I found these pictures of G-Shock watches that I took in Japan showing the time 643. That's some pretty good AI image recognition that Google has there. That is also the yellow watch that I have. People tend to ask me about this. This is indeed a yellow Casio G-Shock watch. 
Uh, the color is heathered yellow. This is a model that was only sold in Asia and not in the USA. So I order these from Japan or Hong Kong or things like, I order these, Chris, how many of them do you have? You know what, they break after a while. And so I'm on my third one. You might not know it, uh, but yes, this is the third heathered yellow G-Shock watch that Chris is wearing. Uh, Epic Wolf says, I am the same age as Epic Wolf. And Brandon says, your 2023 road trip was a whole ton of fun. Um, Miller Times says, what is Yellow Productions preferred airline to Asia? Singapore Airlines, particularly in business class. Uh, if I'm going to Japan, then uh, ANA tends to be my prefer. Like I like Japan Airlines too, but ANA is part of Star Alliance and then United is kind of my primary US carrier. And so those two uh, fit together. Uh, right <clears throat> now. Next set of questions uh, that Google says people ask a lot. Uh, so I've put some of these like how, why, what, and when words after Yellow Productions. So if you search on Google and you type in Yellow Productions when, then the auto completes become when did it start? When was it founded? When was it established? When, when did it open? When did, when did Yellow Productions open? I guess with some of these autocompletes, Google does some of them and then people click on them and people search for them. So there we go. Those are some of the questions. Uh, so when did the channel start? The channel started in 2008. 2008 was when I uploaded my first video to uh, the Yellow Productions channel. It is this video of Norway in a nutshell visiting Oslo, Bergen, and the fjords. This is one of the rare times you are going to see Chris with a beard because Chris was growing a beard in this video. If you haven't seen this uh, yet, maybe I'll make it big so you can see Mr. Burly Man Chris in the lumberjack red right there. Now, where Yellow Productions really, I would say, got started as a concept is absolutely on that 2005 trip to Japan uh, because as you can see right there on my arm, I've got my uh, trusty Sony camcorder that recorded on mini DV cassettes. Uh, took that around, recorded our Japan trip in 2005 before the wonders of YouTube. What did I do with those videos? I edited them and I made MPEG files out of them and I put them on my website, yellow.net with two W's. Why yellow car? We'll see that in a moment. Um, yellow, because it sounds like that. And uh, that was the beginning, the beginning of passing these videos around. People would watch our family vlogs. They're like, cool, Chris, it's cool you went to Japan, but how did you get the JR pass? Where did you eat? Where did you stay? And then that became the videos that I started to make when they ended up on YouTube, a little bit more about that travel guide and a little less of the family vlog. Now, of course, as the channel has evolved, I've gotten a bit more back into the vlogging side of things because I've realized that like people actually might like so when we did like Japan or the Grand Canyon or these sorts of things, like if we're there for seven days, what does seven days look like? Because people are trying to sort out their itinerary and where are they stay and what do they eat and this and that. And so seeing a trip from beginning to end with all of that stuff in it uh, appears to be useful for people, not simply just entertaining. Uh, what is Chris drinking today? Chris is thirsty. Chris today uh, is drinking some, you might call it soybean milk. In Taiwan, they would call it soy bean juice. This is from uh, Fu Huang, a mm, famous uh, breakfast restaurant in Taipei, Taiwan. That's been around for since 1958, long time. That's the only English on this whole bottle since 1958. This is indeed made uh, and bottled in Taipei. And in uh, Orange County, there is a like bulk Asian market that's not 99 Rancher Mitsuo or H Mart or any of the regular suspects, but they had some cases of this that you could get it in like packs of six. And you know what? It tastes so much better than the ugh, soy milk. I'm going not about this, but ugh, the ugh, soy milk that you find at Vaughn's or Albertsons or regular grocery stores in that like milk aisle. Uh, Art says, why does Chris refer to himself in the third person? You know, it's uh, I, me, myself, and I. I don't know. It sounds more, more, um, more bold. More like I'm talking about me as a character. So, like when I refer to myself in the third person, like this, I'm referring to myself in the third person as the younger Chris. Like as if that is somehow a different person than the one you see seated here today. I don't refer to this Chris in the third person. So hopefully that makes you feel better. Um, 
All right. Um, oh, and Amber says I look very European in uh, the bearded photo. Yeah, so European. You're, well, you know, I am in Europe, so do as the Europeans do. So there we go. All right. But really, where did Chris get his start on video with Christopher's World? My dad, Electric Rick, who is in the live chat right now, uh, has always been big into cameras and video and these sorts of things. He was uh, in his working days. He was a limographer. What's a limographer? Uh, he owned a limousine service and liked to take videos. And so what do you do if you own a limousine service and you like to make videos? Well, it turns out a lot of people that rent limousines rent them for weddings. And so then he got into wedding video. And then he would ask Chris to come along with him to do the wedding videos. And so that's where Chris got his start operating the camera and then recording these family videos at home and these things we called Christopher's World back in 1990 is where Chris got his start in front of the camera, even right there wearing a yellow shirt. So I think it was meant to be. Uh, Art says Betamax or VHS. I definitely know Electric Rick, my dad had uh, Betamax, but certainly in the age that I was growing up, it was all uh, VHS tapes. Points Traveler says, hey, same hairstyle as back then. Chris doesn't change all that much. Chris doesn't age all that much. Again, I'm referring to the third person Chris like that, that Chris doesn't change all that much. Uh, and Kathy says, oh, how cute. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. Uh, so now if we do the Google search and we change it to is yellow productions, what are some of the things that we get to autocomplete is yellow productions? We get is yellow productions legit? Uh, is Yellow Productions an LLC, and then Is Yellow Productions a, a bunch of places? I guess, do I live in all those? In any place I make a video, people are like, do you live there, or something like that. Uh, so, is Yellow Productions legit? Well, if you ever wondered what I would look like if I was a saint, I kind of, like, saints are pretty legit, right? Uh, you know, but I have a funny story about being legit. Uh, and Greg says, too legit to quit, too legit. Too legit to quit. Hey, hey, I was a big fan of MC Hammer growing up, absolutely. Uh, but related to being legit, so the other day, OC Girl, the Curious Princess, and I, we were at a garden in Los Angeles called the Huntington Gardens. Um, when I make this video about the best botanic gardens in LA, whenever I get around to actually compiling and editing that video, uh, the Huntington Gardens is gonna be one of the ones in there. And some fellow explorers came up to me and said, like, Chris, we love your channel. And you know what I like about you? I I feel like I can trust you. I feel like you're real. I knew that I could trust you at the point that I watched your video about, like, is San Francisco safe and is L.A. safe? And you talk about the crime and the break-ins and the things that nobody else talks about because it seems like everybody's paid for or on the take or these sorts of things. And you know what? I'm not trying to throw shade on other YouTubers. Like, there's a ton of great honest people that are out there on YouTube, but there's also a ton of other people that are happy to share their opinion that they're paid to share with you. Uh, and you should know that I will never share an opinion different from my own uh, just because there might be some money up in the air. Any product or things like that that I may recommend or suggest, including Planin, who's given this uh, sponsor in the giveaway today, I absolutely love using Planin because it saved me money. And so I hope it saves you money too. And I tell no to 95% of people who say, Chris, can you come here? Can you do this? Or can I give you money to do this? We actually uh, recently turned down a all expenses paid trip to Cancun, Mexico. Uh, there was a travel agency that was like, Chris, come to Cancun. And all you got to do is like, tell people how great our travel agency is. And I'm like, I don't know nothing about your travel agency. And if I recommended you, I don't know that you do great things for my audience because I just, I don't know you. I've never, I never used you. And so how's, how's that, really, how's it gonna work? Uh, and so that's, uh, that's where you know where Amy says, yes, Chris only gives his honest advice uh, and his opinion. And it's only my opinion, but uh, I like to say actually, I do, I do have an opinion. Uh, Art says, we need a t-shirt that says fellow explorers. Great suggestion, Art. I will, I will work on getting one of those up onto the Yellow Productions shop. <laughs> Epic Wolf says, if Yellow Productions had a cult, I would join it. That's how much I trust uh, Chris bring in the Kool-Aid. Just, uh, just soybean juice. There we go, just soybean juice, Epic Wolf. Hmm. All right, so 
Uh, now if you Google Yellow Productions what, what do we get? We get Yellow Productions what is it, Yellow Productions what's app, Yellow Productions what, uh, what happened. And so Yellow Productions Okay, we'll answer those on this one. So what is it? I mean, you're here, uh, but I like, I spend some time, you know, thinking about like, what is this channel? And in any kind of like one of these, like if you ever watch the YouTube videos or read the YouTube things about like creating a channel, you should think about like who it's for, what type of videos you're making, the audience that you're trying to target. Uh, and so you might've heard me say the tagline, travel videos that are fun, informative, and entertaining. Um, I say those things because you won't find backflips off waterfalls or endless drone shots here. You will find some drone shots because they are useful to establish the place that you are, but really this is about the information as opposed to cinematic footage, maybe because I'm not that good at creating cinematic videos, but I try to create the videos with the information that I wish I had when I was going someplace. And when I make a video about some place, I try to make it the best one that's there. And if there's already like a really good guide video on that place, then I don't need to make one because there's already a good one there. But for the ones that aren't great, then those are ones that need the yellow productions treatment. I think like my Sydney, Australia video or my Vancouver video, like a Singapore video, like a bunch of these videos that are the big, the big banner travel guides, which obviously I've published tons of videos, but certainly the ones that say like, city name travel guide or city name travel tips or like the big banner at Yellow Productions videos. And those are the ones that go on and on and on. And those are the ones that generally people come up to me on the street to be like, Chris, I watched your video on Oahu and it really helped me so much. And so I think that's fantastic. I do not have a uh, WhatsApp number. So please don't try to call me on WhatsApp. I think it's all just scammers on WhatsApp. At least that's what I can tell by looking at my email of all the people that want me, that want to sponsor me and pay me lots of money and then tell me to call them on WhatsApp. And what happened? I don't, I don't think anything's happened to Yellow Productions yet, so I don't know uh, what that one is. Valerian the Mac says, uh, shorts or pants? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go, shorts. Uh, I definitely like prefer, prefer shorts to pants, uh, but they are generally of the like cargo short variety. Though when I travel on airplanes, I always wear long pants because planes can be really cold and things like that. And also you never know about the seats. And so long pants are pretty good. Then when I get to the destination, I'll change out of the shorts and uh, put the pants on. Amy says, I believe Yellow Productions is a travel video information channel. Chris gives his opinion review and shows us what is there and available. Thank you very much. That is a great description. Amy. Uh, CIHD says, colorblind people can't really distinguish Yellow Productions from Red Productions. That might explain why my car is orange right now and has a license plate that says yellow. I get endless questions about that where like, if I'm pulling up to like a car wash or something like that, they'll be like, do you, you know your car is not yellow, right? Uh, I'm like, and of course that's when I have to be like, what, what, what? They told me when I bought it that it was yellow. Uh, must have been why it was cheap. Okay, we'll get to the yellow car in a moment. But yes, Chris's car now is indeed orange. Yellow Productions How is what we get right here. Yellow Productions, how is it doing? How is it? How is it made? How is it funded? Uh, and so um, this will answer a little bit of questions of like, how is it made? So this is like some of the equipment that I've used. I've made long form videos about all the equipment, but this camera right here, the, the big one in the middle, the Sony, uh, Sony, FDRAX53 is the primary camera that we use to do our big video shoots. Um, it has a nice wireless mic that you can attach to it. And so you'll often see that on my bag or clipped up here. Uh, if I'm doing my walking tours, then I use the DJI Osmo Pocket. This was the two, now I use the three. Uh, if I'm doing a cell phone for something, then I use a DJI gimbal. The cell phone that I use is the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. If I need a wireless mic to go with this, then I use the DJI mic. You see that up there at the top. Uh, and then um, we've also got some road mics and a GoPro here if I need to get some driving scenes or things like that. That is the equipment uh, about how it is made. <laughs> CIA HD says, uh, how is it funded? Bitcoin, NFT, and Pokemon cards, of course. Of course, that's how it's funded uh, today. 
It's certainly funded by ad revenue, so I appreciate everybody who watches the ads. Uh, it's also funded by many of you that have joined the monthly membership to support the channel. So really you could say it is like a viewer supported channel either because you watch the ads or the monthly memberships or in the rare case where some small percentage of the Yellow Productions videos are sponsored, then the fact that you're able to sit through those and maybe support things like uh, join and plan in or something like that. We've got a great giveaway with it too. Uh, that all helps the channel as well. Chris does uh, does not make a full-time living on Yellow Productions. Chris, third person, <laughs> again, there I go. I think you have to ask why I do it. Uh, my day job is actually in the software industry. So computer science uh, is my background. I got a master's degree in computer science. And so hands on keyboards, probably why I like to do all this like, whiz bang live stream customization of all of these things. A lot of people for live streams use this software called, um, oh, what is it called? <laughs> stream, stream yard, like there's a lot of these web-based things that are easy, but uh, I tend to use these things that are more complicated. Can we, uh, can we hit this button over here? Screen share, do we get this screen? It's just, it's gonna be all over the place like this because you're seeing the screen and the screen and the screen and the screen, but this is vMix and this is all the stuff that I see on this end. And so, you know, if I wanna like pull up, uh, let's see, we wanna pull up a comment, you know, like I tap this little button right here and we get the comments. Uh, if I wanna see some comments that we're gonna see later, I can like click these little things and do that. This is my like, my show timer right there. So I know what time it is and I know how much time it is to the next hour. Uh, and so anyway, that's a little bit, little, little bit behind the scenes and this little stuff I'm going through right now that you're seeing the pictures that go up there, that is a, that is a PowerPoint presentation that we're currently on slide 22 of 47. All right, and then to like, because I don't necessarily click all that stuff. I've got this little like um, button box right here. here. The cord's too short, so it's gonna be upside down. Uh, but this has all the buttons that I can do as like keyboard shortcuts to all of those different things. So like if, uh, if I need to cough, <coughs> then I would push this button. And then I push the talk button to like make that go right there again. Yeah, CIA HD says that looked like the Matrix. It was indeed the Matrix. Jake says, when you upgrade your equipment, uh, do you sell it if so, or do you give it away, or do you keep it as a backup? I keep a lot of it as a backup. Um, like, you know, multiple cell phones. I can never have enough cell phones to use as cameras. The cameras I keep as backups. I've got multiples of these main ones in the middle, this FDR X53. I got uh, two of them. When we do our big shoots, I'll take both of them with me in case something happens to one of them. Um, and But in the case of some of the things, like, I'm on the Osmo 3 now. Uh, my dad got the Osmo 1. Electric Grid got the Osmo 1, so I'm giving back to my dad uh, in those areas. <laughs> Joe says, does Chris get a commission from Spirit Airlines for putting their color? Spirit Airlines should send me a commission because I'm definitely like bringing the street grid to yellow as opposed to Spirit Airlines. That's what I say. Brandon says that setup is simply amazing. Thank you, Brandon. And Karen says, I respect IT people. Uh, Jefferson Graham is in the house. Uh, welcome, Jeff. And by the way, publish out some details on this uh, later in the week, but Jeff and I are planning to do a live stream over on his channel on Friday, talking about even more about behind the scenes, about how we make these videos and things like that. So stay tuned to the uh, community tab. Uh, and if you're on my email list, I'll send out an email with the details and link for that once we've uh, finalized the time and have the link available for you. Chicken Marcella says, what's the best airline to fly to Hawaii? I like United Airlines, uh, Hawaiian Airlines is good. Southwest Airlines is cheap to fly to Hawaii. So there you go. Um, Amber says, uh, Chris is really evident. You put a lot of effort in your content, including the live streams, well-planned, organized and topical. Uh, type A people love it. Uh, Jeff says, I'm putting out the newsletter in the morning. Awesome, Jeff. We should we should finalize the time to, to make sure we're starting at the right time. Uh, maybe we can like trade a couple emails after this, but uh, I don't know, 11-ish or something like that. Anyway, you tell me so we can make sure we do lunch and those things afterwards. Cause we're gonna do the live stream and then we're gonna do like a restaurant review. Uh, so then Jeff can be in the Yellow Productions video too. MT. Thank you so much for your support. MT says, Chris, I just want to show my appreciation for your channel. It's impressive to find time to do YouTube when you have a full-time job and have a family with a young toddler. MT, thank you very much. I appreciate your support. It means a lot. And comments like this mean a lot too. Uh, and that's one of those about like, Chris, why do you keep on doing it? 
Uh, these are the reasons I keep on doing it. And that $19 is really gonna help with the lights and the equipment and things like that so that I don't have to tell OC Girl about that $4,000 laptop that I bought. You know, that's how much it costs to like edit video on a laptop. Um, she knows, that's the MacBook Pro. But you know, it's one of those where like, if we can offset the costs, then Chris doesn't have to go broke doing all of these things. So I appreciate that. Uh, Navid says, how do you make time from your J job to travel and uh, makes? The good news for my job is I get a lot of like vacation time. So that helps a lot. Um, the other one is I do a lot of things like this. I do a lot of things on the evening. I do a lot of things on the weekends. Uh, and I just kind of like try to make it fit in. Within, um, you know, the last couple years, I've uh, I've editing help now. Yusaku, he's helping to edit the big videos you see on the channel. So pretty much all of the big, the big travel guide type videos uh, have been edited by Yusaku for the last maybe six to 12 months. Uh, and, um, you know, more to come. He's like embedding himself in more and more things. And I mean that in a good way, because then that takes the load off me to do the edits, to be able to focus on making new content. And so that's how I've been able to keep the content pipeline going forward. All right. Um, how is it funded? We talked about that right there. Uh, it, maybe it's not funded by Bitcoin. It could be funded by Circus Circus slot machine tokens. There you go. Okay, uh, MT says uh, $4,000 laptop. I would have contributed more. Yeah, the like, so to uh, do edits while I'm out in the world, and I don't do like big edits, but like my walking tours and things like that, I like to be able to process while I'm there. And if I'm using like what I would consider a normal laptop, the like the edit or the render would just absolutely take hours. And But like the new MacBook Pros, the M3 MacBook Pros, you know, a render that takes hours on a normal laptop takes like 10 minutes on those. In particular, when I was uh, in Vegas doing the walk on New Year's, all the way down the strip, an hour and a half. I had an hour and a half of video. That's like that's a lot of video. That's a lot of gigabytes of video. And to render that all out, to export that in a quick manner so that I could get it out the same night, you know, like it took an hour to render that video on the $4,000 laptop. But if I had a cheap laptop, it probably wouldn't have rendered until the next day. And then people aren't as excited about it anymore. And so for those things that are timely, it's really important to be able to have some of that gear. Uh, Kathy says, I've been watching uh, Chris for five years. He's given me so many fantastic tips. I never try to miss a live. And Kathy, you are definitely one of the most dedicated on the live stream. There are many of you that are very dedicated, but Kathy, uh, you come on cruise ships and buffet lines <laughs> and airports. Uh, and so that is absolutely amazing. Um, okay. So, um... Another one about why it's important and related to uh, travel mistakes is I want to make sure you don't make the mistakes I make, uh, you know, and so like, uh, what's this? This is a mistake, you know, going down into the tunnels of LAX. Is it really a mistake? I mean, sometimes you have to go down and they get where you're going, but hmm, you should know what you're getting into when you do that. I get a ton of questions from people about like, Chris, I'm coming into LAX on one airline on one ticket usually Southwest Airlines. And then I'm trying to transfer to another airline to go international. I have 90 minutes. Do you think I can reclaim my baggage, check it in, make the next airline? And I'll be like, no way, no way. Um, but it's great that they ask because if you've never been to LAX, you'd never know how long it can take you to get from one place to the other and just really how big that airport is. Uh, Jeff says, I am buying a new Mac too. Awesome, Jeff. Uh, MacBook Pro, 15 inch, 17 inch, gargantuan one, 15 inch MacBook Pro. That's the one that I uh, take with me most places. Oh, uh, Joe says, uh, when is Chris gonna do a live stream with OC Girl and Spunky Princess? Yeah, OC Girl, she doesn't like to be in front of the video camera, so probably, probably not anytime soon. Uh, and the Spunky Princess, who has now been renamed the Curious Princess, that's the official new name uh, for her channel. Uh, which just passed 2,000 subscribers, by the way, and just reached the YouTube Partner Program. Probably gonna have a whole nother video where I talk about our journey on like creating her channel made for kids. Uh, but uh, you know what? The Curious Princess will likely be a co-host on the live stream sooner than OC Girl is. Okay. Oh, I didn't talk about this picture. I, why do I do it too? Why is it important? I mean, because so I can get licked by dogs. I mean, this is like... 
you know, the kind of things where like, the normal, the normal Chris, here's Chris the third person, the normal Chris probably wouldn't lie down in an airport to get licked by a dog. But the Chris who has a YouTube channel, who's like, that would just make a cool thumbnail or a cool photo to share, then when he sees the dog at, what airport was this? San Jose Airport uh, that you can pet, you know, then I get down to be like, can I, do you want to get down there? Can I take a selfie with the dog? Of course you can. And then I get, I get some, uh, I get some dog love from the dog. I also do it for this. There was a question uh, in the chat. If I've ever sat next to a fellow explorer on the plane, I have certainly been with uh, fellow explorers on planes, not next to yet on a plane. Uh, at VidCon, I run into a lot of explorers. This is Babe traveling. We were sitting near each other at one of the sessions right there. And so definitely when people come up to me and say like, Chris, you really helped my vacation. You're an inspiration. Those sorts of things really super means a lot to me uh, and help helps, helps keep me going to make those videos when I'm like, I'm tired. I don't want to. I could do something else. Um, okay. What about the truth about Topher? Is he real or CGI? Where does this question come from? I asked uh, ChatGPT for what are some common questions that people ask about Yellow Productions. And so ChatGPT told me, this is one, the truth about Topher. Is he real or is he CGI? Uh, and Topher is absolutely real. He might be CGI because there's a little Topher panda that comes up to like tell you, um, you know, do you want to like this video? I hired an artist on Fiverr to like make that little animation to tell you to like things and spin the sign around. Uh, the little rotating Tophers that come up on my hotel review, yes, that is the original Topher that I bought a um, magnetic levitating platform for so that I could levitate him in the air and then uh, put a green screen behind it to take that out and that's how the Tophers uh, go around like that. Uh, this is also the original Topher before he was rudely stolen in London from my camera bag when we were sitting uh, out at an outdoor restaurant, but uh, probably about the year prior to that at uh, Comic-Con, this is in 2019, I had an artist do a caricature of Topher. So there's, there was an artist that was like, I'll draw you for a dollar. And I'm like, can you draw my panda for a dollar? And sure, you know, the kind of person who's doing drawings for a dollar doesn't really matter uh, what they draw. But uh, all the pandas behind me, if you don't know the story about those, and many of you do, when uh, the original Topher was so sadly ripped from our lives and the channels after journeying the world for a million miles or something like that, uh, many fellow explorers responded by sending in pandas. Uh, and so now it is often a different panda playing the role of Topher, just like Lassie or something like that. You know, it's a different dog that plays Lassie and different things. Now it's a different panda, but uh, you know, each one's special because you know, many of them come from as far away as Australia or Switzerland or even close by like San Diego. Um, Adriana says, has any celebrity recognized you? Um, I mean, whether they have, I don't know, but no big celebrities have like come up to me to be, you know, I haven't like, I haven't had, uh, you know, Drew Carey or somebody be like, Yellow Productions, though, you know what? Who knows? I am sure there are some celebrities that watch Yellow, based on the number of views, there have to be some, uh, but just none, none that I have come across as of yet. Uh, okay, so um, yes, uh, Brandon says, the production crew of pandas assembled after that tragic day. Indeed, the production crew assembled after that entire day. They're all uh, part of the crew. Um, all right, and uh, Navid, uh, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. Navid says your energy infects it. Your energy is infectious. Keep it up. And you know, often they say the camera can really like take away like fifty percent of your energy. So yes, this is why Chris always needs a beverage or a drink, often tea, something caffeinated, because you know what? Nobody wants to watch somebody that's half asleep. I mean, I don't know. Maybe people do because people watch like. ASMR videos, right? I have a microphone that's up here, you know, and so like, hello, how are you? Right, I mean, I, I could totally do one of those channels too, and somebody, some notification here, I need to, I need to mute the phone. All right, phone muted. Okay, where did the name Yellow Productions come from? The name Yellow Productions come from this car, uh, but the yellow comes before this car. By the way, this is Electric Rick. Electric Rick is now driving this car. I was driving this car for 
quite a long time, but I will tell you about this car and it actually comes before this car. So, um, when I was 16, I was driving another car that wasn't this car and I got into a car accident with a drunk driver. Um, the, after the accident, the California Highway Patrol was a block away filming an episode of the real stories of the California Highway Patrol. They heard the accident, they came over with their cameras and their lights. They weren't particularly interested in me, they were really interested in her because she was a local exotic dancer or stripper that had, had too much to drink before she got into her car, hence why she made a U-turn in the side of my car. My car was, you could say, totaled. Uh, it uh, was like, uh, she like T-boned me, and so uh, it, the car wasn't worth all that much. The insurance company said, like, Chris, we'll give you $3,000 and you can uh, keep the car or we'll give you, or it's like $3,000 and we'll take the car or we'll give you like $2,900 and you can keep the car. And I'm like, fine, I'll keep the car. Uh, San Diego, where I grew up, uh, right near the Mexican border, on the U.S. side of the border, there's a ton of junkyards for cars where you can go and get parts off other cars. And so we took my car down there and got uh, new panels for it, had them pull out the frame. Uh, now my car was silver, red, and blue because those were the colors from the other panels of cars that I got. I had to get the car painted. I took it to One Day Paint. Um, which I wouldn't recommend. Don't go to one day paint because Chris went there. It took more than one day. Uh, but I didn't know what color I was going to paint the car until I got there. I looked up at the board, having just got into an accident with a drunk driver. And I said to myself, what color shall I paint my car? What is a color that somebody will see me in? I look at the board and I see yellow and I say, paint my car yellow. Now, after having a yellow car, uh, I could, I could never remember my license plate. I just couldn't remember it. And so then I went to the DMV to get custom plates in my car. And back then... You couldn't like go online, you couldn't see what other things were taken, and so I had some like ideas for custom plates. I went to the DMV, those were taken, and then finally I was like, how about yellow with two W's? And they're like, yellow with two W's, no problem. So that's the license plate I got for my car. When uh, I graduated from college and got my first real job, I went uh, and bought this car. This is a 2002 Lexus IS300 in yellow. What, Lexus only made these IS300s in yellow for two years, 2002 and 2003. This is the Sport Cross hatchback version of this car, but by the time you get a yellow car and you put yellow license plates on it, then everybody, what do they want to call you? Hey, yellow! Yellow, good to see you! And so then when I started the channel, it was only natural to call it Yellow Productions. I wasn't wearing the yellow shirt all the time, but my brother-in-law, um, which you may have seen him in a few videos in the past, uh, he at uh, one point in time made the logo that you see here with the film strip font and uh, then put it on this yellow shirt and printed some of them and like gave it to me for a Christmas or birthday present. Said, Chris, why don't you try wearing these? I'm like, cool. And I wore it sometimes. And if I don't, then there's a question we'll get to in a minute. Uh, Aaron says, where are you recognized most? Definitely the Las Vegas Strip. When I'm on the Las Vegas Strip, I'm recognized uh, every few minutes walking down the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, CIHD says, what has been your most awkward interaction with a fan follower? The people who come up to me and start the conversation with, can I take a selfie? Not like, hey, Chris, I love your channel. Hey, I'm Bobby from Michigan. I watch your YouTube videos. Hi, Yellow Productions. Just the, can I take a selfie? <laughs> like, Yes, but weird. Can we be why? Why do you want to take a selfie with me? Um, anyway, any of you who see me, I am happy to take a selfie. And often for people who like don't ask, but they got their phone out in front of them and they're kind of like looking at them like, do you want to take a selfie? Because <laughs> that's the currency now, right? It's not like autographs or things like that. It's selfies. Uh, if you ever do run into me in person, um, then the other things I have for people, just like we have <coughs> the... Yellow Productions Crew shirts that I give away on many things. I've got these uh, Yellow Productions Crew holographic stickers that I've made. So people that run into me when I have my camera bag handy, then get one of these. If I'm out of the beach bodyboarding, I don't have them in my pocket all the time. So if you were one of the people who found me and didn't get one, that was why. They weren't on me at the time. Uh, Points Traveler says, do you drink uh, ever drink coffee instead of tea? Yes, but rarely. The really only type of coffee that I like is cappuccino. I like cappuccino in Italy because it's really good there. I like cappuccino in Australia because it's really good there. In the U.S., I generally only really like cappuccino from Blue Bottle Coffee. Uh, I find that the cappuccino from Blue Bottle Coffee is smooth and not bitter. I don't like the bitter taste of many coffees. 
Okay, um, this was a question when I advertised this live stream, somebody asked, uh, and so I said I would talk about this. What goes into your prep for the lives and how do you make them so polished and engaging? Well, we already talked a little bit about the behind the scenes of like the PowerPoint thing that I put together. I generally write like a Google Doc that's like an outline for the live stream, and then uh, I really look at it as a show rather than a place where I just kind of like like hang out, you know? Like those live streams are like really boring where you get in there and it doesn't seem like the host has anything to say because they haven't thought about what to say and then they're responding to the chat, but it's really boring. Um, so I think there's also like doing one of those, there's a like um, threshold also of like number of people that ask interesting questions that have to like bubble up fast enough that if there aren't enough, uh, then it's just not interesting. And so I also love all of you who come to these live streams every week for the live stream or for the archive or things like that to ask questions, to leave comments. And this is one of the reasons why I actually like doing these live streams. I like seeing the comments and seeing the interaction and seeing how that kind of like changes the actual video where like I could totally record this by myself in this room and then upload it. Um, but to me, it doesn't have the same feel. And so I like the, I like, I like the community. I like the interaction. I like to get to know where Kathy is or where Kathy was or, um, what people had for breakfast. Uh, points traveler, I think talking about the, uh, the accident that I had, uh, that, uh, yeah, the exotic dancer did not pay me in singles. She did not. It was the, uh, the insurance company. Open and shut case though, cause they, uh, they hauled her right off to jail. Um... Jake says, I'm assuming Chris's favorite railroad is Union Pacific. JR Rail, Shin Kansen. I'm sure there's a great connection with yellow or something like that there. Uh, anyway, this is what I see when I look this way. So I showed you vMix at that screen right there. But when I look this way, uh, this is what I got. I got a monitor over here to the left that has the live chat on it, the Google Doc that you see there. I got another monitor over here that I might screen share some stuff on. I've got the primary laptop that runs the live stream on it right there. I got the MacBook Pro over there, so that's the one that does the um, video editing. Uh, the one that runs the live stream is also a pretty beefy laptop too. The microphone I told you about that's up there, and then uh, two lights uh, that are up there to cast a nice, nice soft glow on. Nice youthful look on my face. All right. Where's the yellow shirt? Is a question I get all the time. And this one came from Jeff Graham on my video about the cherry blossoms. And I think it was uh, like a joke a little bit because I was not wearing a yellow shirt. And I answered it in the first 10 seconds about why I wasn't wearing a yellow shirt. But Jeff knows that anytime I don't wear a yellow shirt, somebody has to ask that question. And so he had to ask that question so that I could put it here. I do not always wear yellow shirts in real life. Is this real life? This is real life. Most times when I'm going out to make a video, I put the yellow shirt on because it's part of the brand. Uh, when I'm flying through airports, I wear black. Uh, I wear black because it doesn't reflect on the monitors in the airline, like if I want to watch TV or I want to watch my iPad. So when you watch my airport tours or airline lounge reviews, I'm always wearing black. That's why I don't have anything against yellow. And then, you know, when it's just a normal day, Chris could be wearing any color. Chris could be wearing gray, silver, blue. Uh, Chicken says, would you ever do a subscriber meetup? Yes, I would do a subscriber meetup. It's been asked a number of times and I need to like <clears throat> actually get on doing one of those. Uh, Gene agrees with me that uh, Blue Bottle Coffee is good and Kathy says uh, coffee is the best in Australia. Valerian, the map says, do you surf big waves? Just small waves, just small waves. I, uh, I like to bodyboard more than I like to surf. I can surf, uh, but probably when I was... 24, 25, I was on a bigger wave with my nine foot long board. I kind of wiped out on it. I was trying to hold onto my board and board went this way, arm went this way with the board. I tore my rotator cuff and my shoulder hurt for years afterwards. Um, and so even to this day, like paddling the big board is hard where on a body board, the, some people might call it a boogie board, the small foam boards. <clears throat> and then, you know, with like web gloves and fins, you can get going pretty good. It's much smaller and much easier on my shoulders, but uh, I wanna live. So I have a reason to live, uh, and so that's the reason why I don't get out in the big uh, waves. Big waves, Clark says, uh, live videos seem to have that life to them compared to the canned ones. Thank you for doing your live videos. Clark, thanks for watching, uh, and thank you for that comment too. Rick says, do you have any info on Canada? I have a lot of videos on Canada. Well, British Columbia, Canada, our next trip is gonna be to Banff, and so we'll have more info on there too. That uh, is one of the pictures where Chris 
doesn't have a yellow shirt. Oh, and uh, this is the thumbnail picture for my video of the Japanese Friendship Garden in Balboa Park. Of course, if you see the thumbnail, it doesn't have the it doesn't have the pole there. Uh, Chris is not afraid of Photoshop. Uh, <laughs> I, pho I photoshopped out that pole. Photoshop has kind of a neat like um, I don't know, like a race tool or something like that. So like. I just erase it. And like, it doesn't look perfect. If you look at it in detail, you can tell that it's like, this picture's kind of weird. Um, but that's not the point. It just looks a little better when it's in the thumbnail. And that pole isn't there. Uh, Eli and Eric uh, says, do you ever wear makeup for a shoot? Generally, no. Uh, I've done some content for Japanese television. And in that case, they've put some makeup on me. Uh, but uh, for the content I make for YouTube, I never wear makeup for this content. And Mark says, uh, your videos are always professional and well-researched. Thank you very much. Uh, Alex says, hey, speaking of the subscriber meetup, whatever happened to those Hangout streams you were testing out a while back, that was fun. Uh, it was a Google beta product and they, they, uh, they didn't continue it, which was kind of a bummer, because I agree, that was kind of fun. What is your favorite place to travel? Question I get all the time. Japan, one of my favorite places to travel. Singapore, one of my favorite places to travel. OC Girls Home, Taiwan, a place we go to often within the USA. I love to go to Hawaii. New York City is fun. Uh, within Europe, uh, my mom is from the Czech Republic. So that's a place we tend to go often. Um, I love Italy because I love the food there. I love the UK because it's easy because they speak English there. Uh, Ireland, uh, we want to go to Scotland, put it on our list. Um, so that's uh, like a... We've not been to Scotland. Rainy, it turns out, is a Scottish name, and so I feel like I have to go to the place that the name came from. When we do decide to go to Scotland, I'll definitely make a post for people who've been there to help a, help a brother out uh, on that trip. But there's Japan right there. We love it. Travel there once every year. Or two, and uh, and so does uh, so does the Curious Princess. And you know, this last trip I feel like was definitely like a quintessential like Japan bucket list trip about like Mount Fuji, cherry blossoms, and maybe next time I actually have to like go climb Mount Fuji. Chris, what is your favorite food? Cheeseburgers, particularly from In and Out Burger. This is the one by LAX Airport, which is one of the best places to see planes come in and land over at. LAX. Logan uh, says, do you speak second languages? Uh, which is I speak a little bit of Mandarin. Um, I speak enough Japanese to like order gyoza at a restaurant or order some mizu, which might be water or some beer, which might be biru. Uh, Espanol. Growing up in San Diego in the very gringo pronunciation, I can say, uh, donde esta la biblioteca, which is where is the library? Because when I took Spanish in like uh, college, that was one of the first phrases they teach you so that I can partake in the fine Spanish literature in the, uh, in the library. Uh, Joe says, what is Chris's greatest fear? Ooh, this is like a good, this is a deep question, deep interview question. I don't know. I don't know that I like, I don't know that I sit around and have greatest fears per se. So I have to think about that one more deeply. But I generally consider myself not to be like, I think, a, I think fear often comes from worry and things like that. And so um, I try not to worry because worry doesn't really help. A question I get all the time is also, are you going to visit wherever, like wherever your favorite place is? Are you going to visit the Philippines or Dubai or Missoula or Montana? And we tend to go places that are like where the wind takes us. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, we go to places where we're like, ah, the flights are cheap and shoulder season. And, you know, because we travel a lot and you don't get the, you don't get the big travel channel dollars or things like that. Right. Like we can't, we can't like just go everywhere we want to go at the prices that you pay for summer or primetime travel or things like that. So, uh, yes, you know, looking at like, where's the Southwest fair sale for $39, you know, like, Hey, when can we get our flights to Hawaii for 200 bucks? When can we go to Tokyo for 600, which are all flights that you can. Um, and so it's not, uh, very far planned out. Uh, Zachary Smith says, what is your favorite drink? Probably green tea, probably the drink I'm drinking a lot now, not the soybean juice, which is, is good. It's good. Mm. I like these Ito N green teas, uh, probably my favorite drink. I tend to drink a lot of like plain old black iced tea from like fast food restaurants because I get it there. It's on tap. Uh, if I'm drinking a soda, then 
Coke Zero is my favorite of the sodas. Um, BN Lover says, do you cook at home? What do you eat when you are not traveling? Uh, we don't cook a lot. We cook some. Uh, I cook breakfast every morning. I cook two pancakes, two slices of bacon, a sunny side up egg, and real maple syrup. That's my breakfast like pretty much every morning. Uh, we tend to eat out a lot of our other meals. So, all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, Albuquerque. Chris, when are you going to Albuquerque? I've been to Albuquerque quite a few times, absolutely. But just an example about like, we'll go anywhere. Like it doesn't have to be an amazing destination. But uh, if you ask, are we going to go wherever? Because there's so many destinations, the chances of that one is probably not, probably not super high. Uh, Valerian the Max says, I heard Taiwan just had a 7.5 earthquake yesterday. They sure did. Buildings wobbling around, this and that. Uh, luckily only three people were um, uh, killed. I mean, it's tragic that three people were killed, but like, with a 7.5 earthquake, I think stuff in Taiwan is built pretty well. Buildings kind of like t leaned, but they didn't have a lot of like pancake stuff that really uh, is super, super awful. Okay, what is the weirdest filming experience you've ever had? Um, and there were a few that I thought of, but the, the story uh, that, I, that I like to tell is, is this one, because this is maybe like the reverse celebrity thing. When we were in South Korea for or five years ago, whatever that ends up being, certainly before COVID, we were there on a YouTuber trip that the South Korean tourism department was sponsoring. And so as we're walking around recording things, <clears throat> there are these like elementary school school groups that are walking by. And one of the kids in English in South Korea says like, what are you doing? And I say, we're shooting a YouTube video. And he says, are you a YouTuber? And I say, uh, yes, we're YouTuber, and I carry these cards around in addition to the stickers, and I say, here's a card for my channel. And then he yells out to all of his friends, he's a YouTuber! And then this mob ensues. What you don't see is there's probably 50 kids in this mob that all want a card, and if you can see how amazingly happy they are, it looks like they're at like a Michael Jackson concert. Or, you know, it's like, they've just seen the King of Pop it or Taylor Swift, or, um... You know, so that was uh, definitely one of my most memorable experiences. Not to be, not to be duplicated again. Ever since then, I think like YouTubers hold a uh, amazing like stature in South Korea. Uh, yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, it is time for the giveaway fellow explorers. And this giveaway is valid for people on the live stream. It's also valid for people on the archive. So if you're watching the archive, don't leave yet because you can win here too. If you're watching the live stream, then on the archive will be your second chance to win. And there's even a third chance too, which I'm gonna talk about. So what we are vying for today in the giveaway is not a yellow production shirt. Those will be back next week, don't worry. What we're vying for is a $250 rebate on a hotel stay booked through planin.com, hotel site that I talked about earlier, uh, but you can get 40% off hotels through planin.com, uh, even better discounts too. So in order to win this, you have to be signed up for planin before I do the giveaway, because uh, in order to apply the rebate to your account, you need to have been signed up at the time I do this. If you haven't signed up yet, there is a link, uh, the pinned comment up at the top, and I'm gonna paste it in the chat right now, and so you could totally just like go ahead and do that. Uh, and so to win this, uh, to make this like fair so that people see it, it is a word, it is a word problem. And so I'm gonna put up the word problem, and the first person who gives the answer to the word problem after they read it right here, uh, puts it in the chat, including the dollar sign in front, will win the uh, $250 plan in hotel stay rebate. So that's the question. Now I should have some Jeopardy music. Do, 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 Okay, so if you're listening to this in audio, uh, it's like, if the rack rate of a room at the Wynn Las Vegas is $300 and you get 45% off by booking at planin.com, which is actually the discount we saw for May, how much is the discounted room price at the Wynn? So what do we have? And to see these answers, because sometimes people say, 
Chris, uh, I answered it first. What about me? We're gonna go ahead and look at Chris's screen to see what the first answers that come up are. Uh, okay. And we see some comments that are coming up. By the way, this is like when I look at comments, I look at them in this form. And uh, here we go, we get some things. And right here, this is the first right answer. And now we have a winner, winner chicken dinner. Congratulations to Windy City Elevators. Yes, uh, and we'll put that back up on the screen here after we do this. Congratulations to Windy City Elevators. You guessed the right answer, which is $165. That's how much you can get the win in May. Super good deal on Planet.com. Windy City Elevators, send me an email, chris at yellow-productions.com. Let me know the email address that you signed up for Planet.com so they can apply that rebate to your account. Now, the second chance to win for all of you that are watching the archive or didn't win like Windy City Elevators is on the archive of this video for the next month. So today's April 3rd, we'll make it a month and two days until Cinco de Mayo. All you gotta do, you gotta leave me a comment on the archive of this video, non live stream, on the archive, and you need to tell me what your favorite hotel is and why. What your favorite hotel is and why, and then I will pick a winner at random uh, on Cinco de Mayo. I'll let you know you won, because I'll reply to your comment. You do have to sign up for planning.com when you leave that comment uh, before the drawing on May 5th. And there's a third chance to win too. The people planning were super generous to say, Chris, for any of your audience who books a hotel through Plan In all in the next month until Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, they will be entered into the third chance drawing just of y'all from people who signed up on that Yellow Productions link uh, for a third chance to win a 250 rebate against their booked hotel. So uh, with that, fellow explorers, get your comments in the chat after the live stream here. Uh, and as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm gonna see you in the next video, maybe this Friday with Jefferson Graham and his live stream. More details on that to come. And as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm going to see you all in the next video and the next video and the next video. And that's why I'm thankful for you all that are here because you just keep watching, maybe asking the answering the question of what's my biggest fear. You know, Michael Jackson, I was, we saw, this is the end. Chris, you're still going. This is the end. You're still going. But I have to make this point. Oh, Sigurd and I, we went to watch like the Michael Jackson Broadway show the other day. And one of the things that Michael Jackson said was his biggest fear was that people would, uh, they wouldn't be interested in him anymore. That nobody would, nobody would go to his shows. Nobody would watch him. Nobody would be interested in his music. Uh, and so, you know, at this point, maybe one of my biggest fears, particularly with a live stream, is that I turn it on and nobody joins. Nobody joins, right? I, like I started on those live streams where like Chris was live streaming to two people and it keeps me going to know that so many of you keep coming back. So please do that. Oh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And now really, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.